This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 293 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're going to be talking about a bundle giveaway, how to host one for epic list growth. And I'm speaking with Kate Brubaker, who has actual experience as a food blogger running her own bundle giveaway. We're going to go into the specifics as far as what we need to be doing to connect everything, the tech side of things, how to find the right people to host with you. You're definitely going to want to listen in. And of course, you're going to hear some similarities to the previous episode where I talked about the bundle giveaway that I ran. So make sure that you definitely listen all the way through. If you have not already grabbed my email list growth guide, please make sure that you grab it. Send me a DM at Jenny underscore Melrose and I will send that over to you. As well as I am still offering my free content marketing audit for you. All you have to do is leave a rating and review. Send me a screenshot of that review via Instagram to my DM at Jenny underscore Melrose, and I will do a free content marketing audit for you, which is normally a $97 value. All right, you guys, let's dive in. Hi, Kate. How are you? I'm good. Very good. I am so excited to have you on the podcast, and I'm really excited to talk about um, the a bundle giveaway and how to host one for an epic list growth. Uh, And I know you're going to share some like insider tricks about ways that you've stayed organized and streamlined with it. But before we do that, will you introduce yourself and your business to my audience? Sure. I'm Kate Brubaker and my blog is internationaldessertsblog.com. And I share sweet and savory recipes from Europe and beyond. Excellent. Very good. And how long have you been blogging for? Oh my God, that is such a hard question because I have various sites. And so I've been working online and blogging and selling products and running summits and all that kind of stuff for like 10 years. Okay. Uh, my food blog. Yeah. I started that just kind of on the side and then didn't really do a whole lot with it for a few years. So I guess I could say it's been around for, I don't know, like a year and a half to four or five years, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Okay. No, perfect. All right. So let's just jump right in. What does a bundle giveaway consist of? Yeah. So with these bundle giveaways, what you do is you need to have a paid product that you're willing to give away to your audience and to other people's audience for a period of time, like maybe three to five days. And then you go find other bloggers who also have paid products, ideally around the same price range. And you invite them to bundle all of your products together and offer them all for free during a period of time. Okay, perfect. And how do you decide who and what to include in the giveaway? Yeah, that's such a good question. So the first time that I did a free bundle, um, because I've done paid bundles before, but this was the first free bundle that I did. Um, I was really open because I wasn't really sure who would want to be part of it or how it would work. So um, I left it just very, very open. I called my bundle the Fresh Start uh, Bundle for Cooking and Baking. And I knew my product would fit in that. And so um, I put a note out in a Facebook group that I was in and said, hey, I want to do this to build my list. And um, is anyone interested? What do you think of this idea? And I had some people who said they were interested. I looked at their products. And then um, I started just asking other people. And because like a year ago, I didn't really um, have a huge network of food bloggers um, in my life. And so I just started asking people, hey, do you want to be part of this? Um, And then if they said yes, I would say, can you recommend anyone else? Who else do you think needs to be part of this? And I did that over a period of probably three or four weeks. And I had, it just worked out really well. I had um, 10 people as part of my bundle and um, everything just fit together really well. So yeah, I think this time I'm going to be a little bit more intentional about it. 
What do you um, mean by that? Can you clarify what you mean? I think I know, but I want to make sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm actually thinking more about this next bundle because I'm thinking about making it an annual thing. And I, I might focus it more specifically on people who have baking or dessert related products. And I'm really curious to see if making it more focused on that, like what the results are compared to the results that I got from just a general bundle. Yes. So that's exactly where I thought you were going is whether it's going to be a little bit more niched. And then those results that you would then look at would be not only based on how many people would opt in, but then how many people stay on your list and don't unsubscribe. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. I love that. Okay. So how are the products in the bundle giveaway delivered? So what I did was um, I created a landing page and I highlighted all of you know all the products and all the people in the bundle. And then I had people sign up for free to access the download page. So then once they signed up, it was my responsibility to um, send them all the information, encourage them to actually go to the download page, make sure all that worked. And then um, they would access the download page and the download page had um, information and links to everybody's products. So the thing with these free bundles is that, you know, you don't want to just have everybody sign up and then you got to, you want people to um, sign up so that the people who are part of your bundle get the email addresses, but you don't want to just, you know, give everybody's email address to everybody who signed up. Nobody wants to get that many emails. So you want to um, set up the download page so that people can very easily choose the products that they want to sign up for. And then they go to that person's website, they download that specific product. And, um, you know, so the, the upside is that you might not get as many people signing up overall, but the people who do sign up, they really want your products and they're more likely to stay on your list. So I hope that makes sense the way I described it there. It totally does. So my listeners have heard previously, I've done an episode on a bundle giveaway and the way that I did it. And it's very similar to the way that you did it. I think the only difference is, is that when they get the, when they opt into your page, you're then sending them a link where they can then go to like a download page that they can find everything on the web, right? Where they will then click through to those other, to the participants Right. You know, addresses. Okay. Yeah. So, that's where it gets a little bit confusing because a lot of people assume that they're going to sign up and then they just go to one page and they can just download everything, but um, it works better. And you do have to explain this when you're running the bundle, you have to explain this to everybody, the participants um, who, are, who are contributing their products and the people signing up. Um, but it, it does work better if everybody has to sign up just for the products that they want. Yes. Oh, I totally agree. The only difference that I had is that instead of having them send to a landing page, they got a PDF and that PDF Mm -hmm. then had all the links. Like you had the landing page that went out to each individual product. And that is a really good and an important conversation to have with participants because I did have someone come back and say, well, I thought I was getting all of the emails. And I'm like, no, why would I do that? When you know, you have a landing page that I asked for them to be able to put in their information to be able to get your email. Mm -mm, Not the way this is going to work. I like the idea of putting it on a PDF. I think that could be a good, that could be a good idea. I'm going to think about that because you could email that out. You could put it in a Google doc. You could have have it in a couple different places. Um, I was really concerned that it'd be confusing for people. (laughs) So I worked really hard to make sure that it was super clear to everybody. And, um, you know, it, it actually worked out okay. I think probably because I worked really hard to make it clear. Uh, I don't think I had any, maybe I got a couple emails from people who were a little bit confused, but I don't think so. I mean, I think they just, they got the email. I told them every step of the way, here's what you yes. need to do next. Here's what you need to do next. And um, it ran very smoothly. Yeah. It wasn't the audience that was confused. It was a participant that thought yeah. they were just going to immediately get all these emails from everyone that signed up from the initial page. Like, hey, right. That goes, that kind of goes against, you know, standards yeah. and that, that, we're not getting into those kind of waters here. And I so, made that really clear when I reached out to people, yeah. you know, and I, and I tried to explain like, you don't want all of them because you will get all these people and then you will, they'll, 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 they'll just leave. So, or they'll be really mad. I mean, I would be so upset if I signed up for something and then suddenly got, you know, 
10, 20, 30 people emailing me. Yeah. And I didn't and actually decide that, that I wanted that, right? Sign up for mm-hmm. the individual one. I totally agree. And I think yeah. that that was definitely a mistake that I made. So I love that you brought that piece up because it is really important to have that conversation yeah. with whoever's going to be your participants. So now tell me, how do you keep everything organized mm-hmm. when hosting a bundle giveaway? Yeah. So I keep my entire life organized in Airtable. <laughs> so I created an Airtable base and I had, I use Airtable, Canva and Google Docs. So I have an Airtable base um, where I, I actually created a form for all of my participants, all the people contributing um, their products. And I had them fill out that form so that I had all of their contact information in one place so that I wasn't constantly going back to my email trying to find everything. So I had um, that. I had, if I ever wrote an email to anyone, I put it in the Airtable. I had all the images, product, well, actually I didn't have their products, but I had um, their images, you know, I had everything in my Airtable base. So I could very easily just go there and get what I needed. And then um, it's so easy when I'm going to run the next one, I just reuse it. And then I just make some minor changes. So I also use Google Docs. And I put all of the swipe copy that I wrote for participants and all of the promo images and all of that, the timeline, everything. (laughs) I put all of that in Google Docs and um, made that really easy for them to access. And then I also had everything in Canva nicely organized in a folder. I highly recommend that you stay organized. Otherwise, I mean, that's what makes it go so smoothly uh, because it can get very disorganized very quickly. Yes. And I think that that's, that's why I've been talking about SOP so much lately on the podcast is because yeah. when you have a system in place, like you said, it's so much easier now to just turn around and duplicate it. And you're not going to have a system if you've never done this before, but you do have the option to then create it as you're going along. And I'm a Google doc girl too. Like everything for me was in Google docs. I did the form exactly like you said. So a lot of people are listening going, Oh, this sounds familiar. It is doable. Yes. It's possible. It can be done by multiple people. So I love that. Yeah. So, We talked a little bit about the participants before, but what is the incentive for the participants as compared to the host of the bundle Mm -hmm. giveaway? Because it's a lot of work for the host. Let's be honest. It's a bit more. (laughs) It is. It is. I mean, it's way easier than running a summit. I mean, I've done those before to build my email list. Oh my God, this is so much easier. So for the participants, it's a great way to build their email list. Um, Some participants also have an upsell. So some participants made money. Um, some of them, uh, were happy just adding to their email list and getting people into their funnels. It's another, another reason is that it's really, um, a great way to connect with other bloggers, other food bloggers. Uh, I actually talked to a lot of the people who participated. Um, I went on their podcast or, um, we just chatted on zoom. And so I got to know some other people, um, And so it's, you know, it's just a good, oh, and also it's a good way if you want to run a bundle, it's a good idea to participate in one first, Um, just so you can kind of see like how things run on the back end and just kind of get your feet wet a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I would agree with that as well. Cause I also had participated in a bundle giveaway and was like, oh, I could probably do this and I'll make it a little bit more geared towards blogger rather than to small businesses as much. Yes. Such a good idea. And would you, how would you go about finding someone else that's hosting a bundle that you could like pitch to be a part of? What would you recommend? How would you find them? Mm, That's a good question. I haven't seen a whole lot of food bloggers um, do these, but I am doing another one. So if anyone is interested, I'm going to host another one in August. Um, But I know that a lot of people have been doing these free bundles uh, around the topic of like what you did, you know, for bloggers or people who have small businesses. so you can ask in, in groups and uh, just ask, you know, I say ask around. Um, I come across them all the time somehow, like in Facebook groups. I think I hear about them. Yes. I think that that's the way that I noticed it too, where I saw someone post something on Instagram and then I was like, oh, let me go see who this is and what they're doing. And they might be a great person to add to the giveaway. Did you use a hashtag or anything like that with social media with the expectation that they had to put out that maybe could be tracked that way? I don't think I did. I can't remember. I, I, I might have. I might have. I know I created promo images and um, swipe copy for social. Yes. Um, yeah, I might have. I don't know. I have to go back and check. Yeah, I know that I didn't. And I'm thinking like that could be a way 
for someone to go on to like social media and put like hashtag bundle giveaway or, and sometimes we have habit though of getting a little bit more niche with it because we're trying to be broad, but like, I would try to put bundle giveaway in maybe to try to find other people that have done them in the past. I know I've Googled yeah. them right. and because they're so new, there's not a lot of SEO behind them. So they're yeah. difficult to find that way. Yeah. But um, yeah. And I also know that for those that are listening, if you are looking like that's perfect. If you're looking for baking and Kate does them, um, Amy Katz also, I know has hosted one for vegan food bloggers. Oh yeah. So- she was in my bundle too. Oh, perfect. There you go. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. So I think just trying to, like you said, look in Facebook groups and kind of watch other people and see what they're doing to see if a potential of pitching to be a part of it. Super smart. Yeah. yeah. So you have a checklist on ways to actually streamline hosting a bundle giveaway. Can you tell me more about it? Yeah. Yeah. So I created this checklist that gives you an overview of the things that you need to do. So you kind of have the big picture before you start. And then I also share some of my tips. Um, I jumped into doing this free bundle because I've run paid bundles before as part of summits. And so I felt like, okay, I know how to do that. So I can easily put this together. But if you're starting from scratch and you've never done it before, it can just be really helpful to have a very brief guide. So I have that as a free download. And then um, I actually, people asking me for my Airtable template so that they could use it when they're hosting their free bundles. So um, yeah, so I'm selling that as well. And, you know, it has everything you need to stay organized. You can just um, customize it as much as you need. I don't think you'll need to customize it too much, but it's super easy to use. And um, staying organized is super, super important to actually enjoying the experience of running a free bundle. Yes. And we're going to link to both of those in the show notes. So everybody can make sure they want that they get a hold of those. You can also, as my listeners know, you guys can send me a DM on Instagram at Jenny underscore Melrose. And I will send you a link directly to both of those, the template um, that is the paid product, as well as the checklist that you have, that is the guide um, that is free. I did think of one last question I wanted to ask Mm -hmm. you. And that was, did you feel that the free bundle giveaway was more successful than the paid? bundle giveaway? Yes, because, um, well, I mean, it it was different. The paid bundles that I've done have been part of summits. And so, um, you know, I was wanting to build my list at the summit, but I also was wanting to earn money. With the paid or with the free bundle, um, I, we had over 1200 people sign up for the the free bundle. Of course, not all of us got 1200 people. I didn't get all 1200 people on my email list, but it was a really great way to, you know, build the email list. And um, I didn't have a second product to sell last year, but I do this year. So I'm really hoping that I will not only build my list, but I will also earn some money. So, and it's just, I do, I keep saying this, but like it was so much easier than running a summit. And I thought about running a summit. I was really excited about it, but a little, wasn't sure I wanted to do all that. And when I thought about the free bundle and I saw other people, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is, this is perfect. Yeah. Yes. And I love that you talked about that upsell because I do, I feel like you do it for free and then you have an upsell that comes right after it. Anyways, you can still yeah. be making money from it that way. So, so important. And for those that are saying, hearing us use industry term of an upsell, it's just like having a tripwire product. And you guys can listen to that episode that was recently published that we talk about the tripwire product. So if you're unclear on what that means. Okay. One last, actually I lied one more. Where are the best places to connect with you, Kate? I am at international desserts blog.com and I'm also on Instagram. I'm trying to be there a little bit more than usual, but I am, you can also find me on Instagram. Excellent. Excellent. Kate, thank you so much for sharing and providing them with that checklist and the template. It's going to be so useful and such an easy way to grow your list, which we all know is so important. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Of course. All right, there you have it. So not only did you get to hear the specifics about how Kate ran her bundle giveaway, you got to see the similarities between how I did mine and she did hers. And she is making it super simple for you, offering you a checklist, as well as giving you the template that she has for Airtable so that you can just plug and play if you are ready and prepared to host your own bundle giveaway. So make sure you send me a DM if you are interested in receiving them, or you can hop over to the show notes and everything is linked there as well. As always, I appreciate you guys so much when you leave a rating and review. And right now I'm still offering a free content marketing audit when you do so. So Just leave me a rating and review, send me a screenshot on Instagram, and I will do a free content marketing audit for you. All right, you guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 